Okay, I know not everybody is a pro wrestling fan. If you are one of the people that don't like pro wrestling and are about to comment, you know it's fake, right? Yeah, we know. It's not like they are hiding it anymore. It's just entertainment. And if it's not your thing, that's fine. Some of us have watched wrestling for years. As I've been known to say from time to time, cool is what you like. If you are a pro wrestling fan, and even if you're not, then give this a shot. You might find it interesting. Now, it was casting for a movie that inspired me to do this video. And as I was trying to put it together, I found myself kind of all over the place with my thoughts. So bear with me as this will be talking about a little pro wrestling history before I get into the movie. If you were a pro wrestling fan, I'm sure you have at least heard of Devon Eriks. And if you were a pro wrestling fan from North Texas in the 1980s, you know exactly how popular the Von Erichs were. I once heard someone say when the Von Erichs came to town, it was like the Beatles coming to town. And I think that puts it in a nice nutshell. Girls would cry and scream and reach out just to touch one of them. Kevin, David, and Carrie Von Erich were everything you wanted from local heroes. Good looking, athletic young guys that were portrayed as always doing the right thing. While there were a lot of wrestlers with fabricated backgrounds, the Von Erich boys really did grow up in the Dallas area. There were people in the crowd that saw Kevin play football at North Texas University. Some of them played basketball against David in high school. Even I remember Kerry throwing the discus when he came to a track meet at my school. The regulars at the Sportatorium, where Dallas had weekly house shows, practically watched the boys grow up. And some of them may even remember buying a program of popcorn from them at one time or another. You know, maybe I need to go back a little farther to tell this properly. The patriarch of the Von Erich family was Fritz Von Erich. Fritz was born Jack Atkinson in 1929 in the little town of Jewett, Texas, about 70 or so miles east of Waco. It was definitely a different time as Fritz was growing up in the 30s and 40s. In what was likely a this-will-keep-him-tough line of reasoning, Fritz's father would take young Jack to the town square where other fathers would gather with their sons and, well, they'd have them fight. And, of course, wager money on the outcome. It's the kind of thing that would have someone calling Child Protective Services today, but in rural Texas in the 1930s and 40s, it just was what it was. And even if someone had called the police, well, Fritz's father was the local sheriff. It was an upbringing that might be considered barbaric to some people, and I can't disagree. But at the same time, it, it might have been the foundation for what turned Fritz into a wrestling star. After attending college, Fritz first had visions of playing pro football. He tried out for the original Dallas Texans, the team that would eventually become the Baltimore Colts, and played a couple of exhibitions with the team before being cut. He then went to Canada to try out for the Canadian Football League, but that didn't pan out either, at least not for football. On that trip to Canada, Fritz met Stu Hart, the father of Brett and Owen Hart, and began training to be a pro wrestler. Hart is infamous for having grueling training sessions, but with Fritz's experience growing up, it might well have just been business as usual. While pro wrestling had predetermined outcomes, Fritz quickly gained a reputation for working stiff in the rain, which means when Fritz hit his opponent, there wasn't much pulling his punches. He was hitting pretty hard. To the point that some wrestlers refused to work with him. Fritz went on to be one of the biggest stars in pro wrestling from the 1950s until his official retirement in the early 1980s. Originally centered in the Northeast in a hated and feared heel, Fritz portrayed a goose-stepping Nazi sympathizer, hence the name Fritz Von Erich. Eventually, Fritz came back home to Texas and took part in ownership in the Dallas wrestling territory. By the late 1960s, Fritz had turned good guy and was setting himself and his family up to be the hometown heroes. By the early 1980s, it had reached success even Fritz didn't see coming as his three oldest sons, Kevin, David, and Kerry, led the explosion of popularity. It sounds a little bit simple, doesn't it? But boy, is, is it anything but simple, and I am leaving a lot of blanks in the story for a reason. The Von Erichs are the ultimate story of success and tragedy. The deaths in the family alone make you shake your head, starting with Fritz's first son, Jack Jr., dying in an accident on the family farm in New York when he was only seven years old. As the Von Erichs and what was by that time known as world-class championship wrestling were reaching their greatest success, 
it all started coming apart. Between 1984 and 1993, David, a younger brother Mike, the youngest brother Chris, and Carrie all died. There's far more to the story of how and why they died, but for this video it's kind of if you know, you know. I would have to go on far too long to tell the whole story. In fact, that's kind of my point in making this. Their story is one that has begged to be turned into a movie for years. I've even had ideas of a story swirling in my head on and off. Well, it's finally going to happen. And taking its name from the Von Erich signature hold, The Iron Claw is a movie that is written and directed by Sean Durkin. Some of Durkin's credits include directing episodes of the series Dead Ringers, as well as the critically acclaimed Martha Marcy May Marlene. The Iron Claw is currently in pre-production, and while very little about the movie or the script has been released, there was some rumblings online about casting. Earlier this year, it was announced that Zac Efron was cast as Kevin Von Erich, the oldest of the wrestling sons and the only one of the 1980s Von Erich still living as of 2022. The announcement of Efron as Kevin was met with everything from a raised eyebrow to a roll of the eyes from wrestling fans. I have to admit, Efron would not have been one of the first people I thought of when it came to casting any of the Von Erichs, but I think most people still associate Efron with the high school musical movies. Efron has moved beyond all that in his acting career. You probably know about the Neighbors movies, but you may have missed his turn as a doctor in the movie Parkland. And he has what looks like a really good movie coming up called The Greatest Bear Run Ever. It's set to be released September 30th, and if I keep dragging my feet on this video, it may be released before I get this video out. Point being, I ain't mad at the casting of Zac Efron. I think he can pull it off. While he doesn't exactly match up with the sleepy-eyed look of Kevin, I realize you do have to make some allowances. Casting a part of pro wrestlers is a difficult one, and nothing is as good as an example of having to make allowances than when casting David Von Erich. While David did not have the chiseled, muscular frame of Kevin and Carey, he was still huge. David was 6'7". Good luck finding an actor that looks like David at 6'7", can act and can move around a ring as well as David. That brings us to British actor Harris Dickinson. He has been in recent releases like Where the Crawdads Sing and See How They Run. I really don't know that much about him, but he does look a little bit like David. I have seen some people uh, criticize the choice because Harrison is only six foot two, but some small lifts in the shoes can bring it up to you know six four or six five. I think it'll be fine. At least on the surface, I don't think the casting is too bad. And that brings us to who I think is the toughest of Devon Eric's to cast, Carrie. I actually saw Kevin, David, and Carrie wrestle live and was lucky enough to meet both Kevin and Carrie in person. And Carrie was huge. At the time, not every wrestler looked like a bodybuilder. Carrie really stood out because he looked more like a Greek god. Casting the role of Carrie Von Eric could not have been an easy one, but really? This is Jeremy Allen White. He is in an FX television series called The Bear. He was also in a really good movie called The Rental, and is possibly best known as Lip Gallagher in the series Shameless. He's also pretty far away from looking like Carrie Von Erich. As I said, it can't be an easy role to cast, but they couldn't get closer than this. I looked for young actors online for 10 minutes and found Anthony Gaspar. He's done some theater, a little TV, and a couple of small movies. Granted, I don't know how good of an actor he is, but he looks a lot more like Carrie Von Erich than Lil. I don't know, maybe White will surprise me, maybe he will hit the gym hard and look more apart. Maybe I'm being too picky because these were guys I grew up watching. But since those are the only roles cast so far, I thought it would take a minute or two to try and cast the rest of the movie, mostly concentrating on young, aspiring actors that would be getting their big break rather than big names. And it's too bad it's 2022 and not 1992 because the part of an older Fritz was made for Lawrence Tierney. But since that can't happen, I thought why not take a chance and give a big break to an actor living in the Dallas area named Garen Gosnell. Admittedly, it's a stretch. Garen does mostly voiceover work, but I assume they will want someone that can play a younger Fritz as well as an older Fritz, and I think he falls enough in the middle he could do it. He's also very athletic, having been a cheerleader at Stephen F. Austin State University. Yeah, 
You would think Mike Von Erich would be a little easier, but I actually spent a little more time looking around for this one. Maybe because there were more actors that fit the mold better. I finally decided the first one I saw was actually the best one, and it gives another actor their big break. DeLorean Darren. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. Uh, he's based in New York. He is a musician, which would come in handy as Mike was also a musician out of the rain. DeLorean doesn't have a long list of credits, but he did do an uber promotional ad. Mike would also likely be a smaller part. I think he could fit the bill. And Chris would actually be a little tough. He was the youngest of Devon Eriks and came into the public eye when he was only about 12 years old. I don't know exactly what years the movie covers, but I thought I would aim for someone around 16 or so, or at least someone that could pass for 16. Then it struck me, there is someone that is almost perfect. Gaten Metarazzo, who plays Dustin on Stranger Things. Chris had health problems and physical limitations, so he was never that big. His wrestling career really wasn't very long, so it's not likely they will delve too deeply into that. Gaten could be a recognizable face in Among Some Unknowns, and fits in pretty good, I think. But finally, the least public of the Von Erich family, the boy's mother, Doris Von Erich. She only made a couple of public appearances over the years, and it would likely be a smaller part. Looking for someone that might be able to play a very young version of Doris as well as an older version. I really didn't come across anybody that blew me away, but I did find someone that I liked. She lists her name simply as Michaela, and she is from Giddings, Texas. She doesn't have much of a resume, and what is there makes me think she might be better suited for comedy, but I just thought she was interesting. She lists mimicry as one of her skills, saying she can listen to a line spoken once or twice and then repeat it with the same tone and inflection. She also says she has an amazing ability to irritate people while smiling and playing nice. So, why not another shot at giving someone her big break? Again, it's probably a smaller part. And she is also a Texas girl, and this is a movie about Texas wrestling legends. So there you go, largely unknown actors. You already have the star power of Zac Efron and recognizable faces in Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, and Gaten Matarazzo. Unknowns getting their big break with Michaela, DeLorean Darren, and Garen Gosnell. And maybe we can find a bit part for Anthony Gaspar and fit him in as well. Maybe he can be Lance. Sorry I brought that up. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know who you would cast. It can be realistic, it can be a fantasy casting, Whatever you want to do. If you want to see more videos on wrestling or movies, click one of the links on the end screen. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Not necessarily in that order. And I will see you next time.